Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, you know what it is. Real late, Hot 97. My name's Peter Rosenberg. And uh, yo, my, my this is the third interview in a row with artists who I actually, who bless my album. So I'm super fortunate mm -hmm. and grateful uh, to have you in the building, not only for all the music you made, but specifically for, for being on the lead single, uh, Marcus Smart, off That's my right. album. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Stove God Cooks is in the building. Yeah, we in here. What, literally in the house right now? How you doing, man? Literally. What's good? I'm chilling, man. Back in New York. Yeah, what's so? What's it like being back out in New York, out and about? How was and how was the show last night? Webster Hall, you're out on the road with Conway. How was that last night? Super dope. It was, it was sold out. I, I believe. I it it certainly crazy. looked it that crazy. way. Yeah, it, it looked that dope. way in the photos. Everybody came out. Um, meth. who came out? Meth. Yeah, I saw Meth Red. Red. Fucking. I read a couple other names too. Amy was like. in there. Jim Jones was in there. It was a lot of motherfuckers in there. You know, Griselda was in there. Wes, Benny, everybody. Um, Flea Lord. Uh, Leor was in there. Nah, Flea Lord. Flea Lord. Not Flea Lord. Like <laughs> yeah, shouts to Flea. <laughs> shouts to my man, Flea He's Lord. moving like Leo right he is, now. He is. Yo, shouts to Flea. That's <laughs> my guy. Real. Um, so, yo, let's, we've never done this, like, properly, so... Tell me a little bit about the Stove God story, man. You've had an interesting sort of emergence over the last several years, uh -huh. and it seems like you're someone whose star has continued to rise slowly yeah. as time's gone on. So tell, what, what was your first your first foray into music? What what was that? What did it look like? When was it? Just into music, period? Period. Like, Not let's, like let's go in back. the game. No, nah, let's start with the music part, okay. and then we'll jump to the game. Um, My older brother, he was just like, Real hip hop head, like half a mil, like real hip hop shit. And and what what era? So we're talking. You said half a mil. We're talking late nineties. That's it. Late nineties. So ninety. So I'm super young, but my brother's older, and I'm hearing all of that every day, every morning. I don't know what it is. So you're getting put on to the uh, right. I don't understand it until later. Bring your mic a little closer. My bad. So you're bringing. You're talking. We're talking CNN. Yeah. Uh, right, Nori, Nori, um, Mob Deep, Mob Deep. I mean, this is a time. Right. This is a great. great. That's the type of shit. Like, I'm growing up on, like, getting ready for school. I'm hearing that. I don't know what it is. Do you remember what the first like? Are there any particular? They could be super random because I know what it's like when we first uh -huh. get into music. Any particular songs that like you you remember from being like, yo, I love this song. I don't know what I'm listening to, but I know the feeling of this song. I love this feeling. I think everything like half a mil. Wow, really, huh? Like everything half a mil. Give me that feeling like yeah, he had that vibe and like really could rap. I feel like he was like, like later on once I grew up, like damn, like homie was real underrated. Like not at the crib, but in hip hop, like he was very underrated because homie was crazy. I feel that way about Nori shit too. So half a mil is so interesting too. It's like he was here so quick and then I, gone. You know, like before people, he was signed, I think, to Penalty Records and he had a couple singles and, you know, I wasn't in New York at the time, uh -huh. so I wasn't even super aware of how yeah. how much from? street love he had. I was in D.C. Okay. Or outside D.C. At that time when he dropped, I was on the radio at University of Maryland already. All right. I, I was playing records already by that time. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and then and then so it's, it's funny, it's, it's sad because he's one of those names you know, sort of like stack bundles to a certain degree. Right, right. That that like unless you know and you were yeah, and you were you, tapped in, you won't know. He, and 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 the crazy thing is, you might never know now unless you really do the work. Definitely, these guys mm -hmm. didn't get you know to the point where a big L got to where everyone. And I'm not comparing anyone artistically, but right. where when L L was super underground when he was alive, yeah. but when he passed, he'd made it far enough mm -hmm. for everyone to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Put him in a certain place, but if you didn't make that last step, it your 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 legacy is not quite. That's people don't honor it the same way. Nah, that's absolutely what it is. So when did you start like um, being like I'm gonna be the kid who writes raps? I mean that's generally how the story goes. I don't know the Stove God story, yeah, but yeah. in general, it's I was in school and started writing raps on notebook paper. Was now that my, your experience? My brother wrote raps. And wait, so, before you were writing raps, yeah, he wrote raps. So I would hear him write his raps. How was he? He was he was dope. And he was dope enough for me to go recite it. Like it was mine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I'm in school reciting his shit like it's mine. And you know when I don't have no more, they like, nah, come on. Keep going. 
So then I got to write my own and, and make you, it sound like, as bro, good you as that. Come up with more <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah, so then I started writing. And then I'm listening to, you know, my own shit at that. That's like Bad Boy Time, Mace, Puff, Pun. Like, I'm finding my own shit that I like to listen to now. So it's like, now I'm seeing, okay, not only can these niggas rap, but they making hits. That's what I need to do. That's where I started, like, focusing on, like, hook writing and making sure I could write choruses and shit like that. So then let's 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 play that out then a little bit further. Foray into the actual game then. Mm -hmm. How do you start taking steps into the music business? I just felt like once I started writing and really studying the albums, whether than just listen to them, then it's like, okay, this is what I want to do. I, can, I feel like I can do it because I'm listening to albums and I'm like, you know, and these motherfuckers is in the game already. I'm a kid. I'm like, that verse was dope, but he should have said this and he should have said he should have changed that. He shouldn't have said that like that. That's how I'm looking at the music then. So I'm like, all right, I could do this. So then I just started writing and, you know. And then so, so because I think kids are so curious about this. So then you, so you're in school at the time, yeah. I'm assuming. A teenager? Uh-huh. When you decide, I'm go I, now I want to do this, what are then the first steps that you start to take to try to make that happen? I stumbled on this kid, this older dude, out in Syracuse. And he well, and first of all, and, and first of all, what was the, how much of a scene was there in Syracuse? It was a little bit of a scene. You know, there was rappers there. Who was there? Anyone who who was like who made it big in the nah, city? Nobody. No one who made it out. Did any? Was yeah. anyone big in the city? I'm saying it was like as I grew up, you know, more and more people. When I was really young. It was like a handful of people. Like, it wasn't cool to say, yeah, we gonna rap. Now it's like, you know, they know it could be done. Everybody rap now. But it wasn't, when I was young, hardly anybody. It was a handful of people, though. All right, so who's the person you ran into? So you said you stumbled onto an older mm -hmm. kid. Yeah, this dude from out there, he had a studio. I'm like, let me get in. Like, you know, I'm writing it. I got it. I'm on the little... The boom box hit the record with the little mic. You know, we recording it like that. I'm like, let me get in the studio. And I just, you know, build a relationship with him and really just start locking in. And at first, and so was the first thing you did was started recording yourself or did you like no, help? No, no, he was recording me. And, and, but you were right, you were writing and rapping. You weren't mm -hmm. writing for other people. You were just rapping. Like yeah, that. I was just, it was just me just writing and going to the studio. And, and having him record me. And then how did how would you release the music at that time? What year are we talking about, generally? Probably like 09, 07. Mm -hmm. So this is end of the... No, no, it's still, it's still the middle. It's still like the middle of the blog era, mm -hmm. basically. That's yeah. the, the time. That's what it was. I wasn't releasing music, though. I was just recording. So I wasn't putting it out. You weren't sending it out to blogs no, or anything like that. You were just doing it. Yeah. And okay, so then what was the actual? How did this we didn't believe like there was no reference where we from? Right, there's no reference of like I'm gonna record this shit, give this shit the fucking complex, <laughs> and no, nah, there, there was no reference. Just like yo, son, I'm dope. And I'm gonna play this for the homies, and they gonna know I'm dope. That was, like that was it. There was no reference in the town at all. It was like I'm gonna drive around, listen to my That's stuff. That's it. Yeah, feel excited about to hear it. That's it. And if a couple little DJs, I mean, play it while we in the club. Like, we lit. That was it. It was nothing more than that. Like, I felt like I knew I was dope. But there was no reference of, like, yo, we can make it about this bitch with this rap shit. And Ever. that's one of the parts of the story that's always sort of underlooked when you're coming from markets that aren't, uh -huh. you know. Because if you're, if you're from L.A., New York, Chicago, and, you know, you're in an area where rappers have come out of your either your area or the area next door or whatever yeah there are people who know there's someone who knows someone that's what i'm saying there is none there you was none that. of that so then what was the first business step you took to getting the music out how'd you do it once twitter and you know then we just started posting music so it was like once twitter started we would just go on there and you know just post music there was no you know, real 
method to it. I was just recording dope music and, you know. You Do you remember the first people who, like, a first person or people who on social media noticed you and were like, yo, this this, this is actually, actually dope? Real people or just people, period? Either one. I was thinking notable people. Notable people. The first person was Lord Jamar. Really? Lord Jamar? Lord Jamar. And he introduced me to Buster Ryan. So that simple. So he and he just literally stumbled onto your stuff on and Twitter. listened to it and liked it? He listened to it on Twitter. He liked it. He he said he didn't think. He's like, nah, it, you can't have a bunch of these that sound this good. So he reached out to me, he was like, send some more. I sent him a few more songs. He was like, Yo, we need to have a conversation. Like, I think I could help you. The feeling is to me in my world. You seem to be very highly sought after these days. Would you would you say it's safe to say that you're having one of those moments where it feels like there's a lot of incoming, a lot of incoming phone calls and messages? Um, I'm not doing shit real. What do you mean? It's, it's not that crazy. It's not that. Crazy. It's not, okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. No, I'm saying, I feel like I'm putting the work in and it's being recognized. That's a, like that's about it. Do, was that, your was your plan always to? move slowly sort of step by step and and have a, cer a certain level of patience about it it seems Hell like it, no you wanted to get it popping quick yeah i wish it would have got popping five years ago <laughs> like, does it does it frustrate you be honest people don't like talking about yeah. real feelings w would it be hard for you when you would see someone who pops up on the scene you find out they've been rapping for six months and they're yeah. already on and out of, of here of course and you're like it but was, i've been doing this i got bars right. i'm around bus like, I would bust every day. What are we doing? <laughs> People like, I was doing the fucking BT Awards shit, the Cypher, mm -hmm. Revolt Conference. Like, bus had me in the door. And I'm telling you, it was just like, the universe was like, not yet. That's so it. What would he tell you? Because you're like, I got Busta co-signing me. Right. Everyone and thinks and that's I'm it. And I'm dope. And I, you know you're dope. And by the way, everyone knows. I'm not just saying that because you're in my house. No, no, no. Everyone knows you're okay. dope. Okay, yeah. So They know I'm dope. And I got bus co signing me. Why is it not just like it wasn't happening right at this like exact it really moment? Wasn't the and I didn't understand that until now. So what what, what would Busta tell you? Would he would he give you any like insight on that? Because you know Busta's you emergence know, Busta. was God. relatively quick. God's timing, God. It's God's <laughs> timing, God. <laughs> like, come on, God. But, but you know he was absolutely right though, for real. Like. Now it's like I'm glad that shit didn't happen then. Why is that? Why people say that? I wasn't why ready. That? I really wasn't ready. I was looking at at this shit totally different than you know. I was around bus for like three years. Then you know, three years later, I'm like, the shit that excited me then don't excite me now. What so happened? Now it's more about just like being creative, making dope music, and and just solidifying my name. That's it. I don't give a fuck about none of the other shit. And how about this? The game evolved while you were hustling and trying to make oh, it happen. Absolutely, especially upstate. Shouts to Griselda, this right? This is what I'm saying. So it wouldn't have been the same because when I was doing, when I got around bus, when I was doing the fucking BT Awards and MTV and shit with bus, the Griselda shit wasn't big yet. So it's like that time... And, you know, having to have patience because I ain't going to say I was just patient. Having to be patient, like all that shit just aligned. Perfectly. Think about how many dope artists came out between, you could go all the way back to like the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. 03, 04, 05, when the vinyl era was ending, when people, because people used to press up singles, when the singles stopped being made and all that. Yeah. From that era, all the way through to the Griselda era. Right. You know how many dope cats there were where there like wasn't that much of a space to occupy? Mm -hmm. Like you still you still kind of had to get signed. You still right, kind of right, had right. to do the traditional stuff. And great people who we know and, and, and love, they really weren't able to capitalize on a major part of their career right. until these last few years now. That's why Rock Marcy is like the treasure because he stood strong in that, I'm not changing my shit. 
We're not doing no down south shit. Like, this is what we're going to do. And that's that. <clears throat> so he like, the godfather of all of this shit, just for standing strong on, on what he wanted to do, his sound, and then, you know, ushering that, that next wave, which is the Griselda shit, Conway, Benny, Wes, and then, you know, Wes just took that shit and took them to another level. That's It's, it's a great point because Marcy, you know, he really is the dude who takes us from the previous yeah. era all the way to this era as an influence on this entire generation. And throughout that, there are other people, obviously, who popped up. You had your Brownsville Ka. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, Willie, God, it's crazy. Willie the Kid. Willie is dope. Who, you know, cats who, who were there. Yeah. And, but without Marcy holding the torch. Yeah, it wouldn't have worked. I don't think it gets here. And it now, doesn't and, get there. And now here we are. We have this uh, amazing time. So how, I assume that the relationship with Marcy developed through Busta. Is that safe to say? Yeah, I was... So I was at the studio with Bus. He was trying to put together a um, flip mode reunion album. He was calling Marcy to the studio, and Marcy wasn't feeling it. Marcy was like, you know, like, what he, he the godfather of this new shit, this new lane. Like, oh, I get it. I can't, you know what I'm saying? I can't step out of that right now to do a flip while we there, like, I thought the shit was hilarious. So I just used to sit in there during their little discussions. And homie just used to, you know, look at me because I'm laughing and shit. Because you, like, knew, the you, you yeah, knew the homie's the not doing right. this shit. <laughs> and it makes sense when you think about it because it's like, well, I can't jump back into now. I'm, I've am i built this whole right. thing. I'm a god over here. Mm -hmm. I can't step back. To, you know, Bus was the god of, of that moment. Mm -hmm. Marcy is the god of this moment right here. And I understood it. What, While we in there, bus is pressing play on my shit. Okay. And Marcy is like, like your homie is dope, huh? And you guys just developed a friendship, uh, a friendship from there. Yeah. So we just start, you know, leaving the studio and shit, just like popping out, grabbing something to eat, or you know, just chopping it up. And then one day he was just like, yo, something like, I'm gonna send you something. Like, let's see what you could do. Like, see what it sounds like. Because I was telling him, like, I don't want to fuck with that shit. Ain't no drums. I don't want to fuck with, I don't want to fuck with that shit y'all be doing. Because, you know, I love I love West voice. Conway is just an amazing rapper. Mm -hmm. Benny talked the shit that I love to hear. Mm -hmm. so, but it's always, for me, was like, yo, son, like, ain't no drums. No, I come from bus. Bus is... Oh, we need this kind of. We trying to play this in the club. We trying, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, he sent one. Marcy sent one through, <laughs> and I was telling my man, my man right here with a, like yo son, I'm gonna fuck with it. But if I do, I got to do it my way. Because you know they was doing like, forty bars, no hooks, just rapping, and that's it. Mm -hmm. I'm like yo son, I got to do it my way if we gonna do it. And bring the melodic shit in there. So I did the first joint. What was the first one you did? Um, Money Puddles. Okay. Mm -hmm. That was the first joint I recorded that Marcy sent me. And then he just kept sending shit. And I just started building the album. Like I did that shit in the studio, me and my man. Like me and Marcy had never been in the studio together for reasonable drought. He was just sending the shit. And I'm just going crazy on them, sending them back. And then once I found a groove, I'm like, oh, yeah, I could do this. And then before you And know it's feeling dope to me. Like, I'm starting to love it. Like, I'm like, yeah, we this shit going to work. And then before you know it, you have an entire The album. whole album, yeah. And did you, in terms of how the album was received, did it get to where you wanted to? Do you feel like Reasonable Drought got? what it should have gotten from from the fan base that was out there? Yeah, it passed it. I didn't think it would do, I didn't think it would be received how well it was received. I know Rock Marcy name was on it, so they was going to listen. I know the Buster I Am Cosign was going to make them tap in. But I was just at the point where I just want some music out. I had been around Bust all this time, like I don't really have nothing out. I'm like, I just want some music out. And if I bring them into my world, they going to fuck with me. 
I remember for me, it was interesting because I have been sent your album by someone. Yo, and I swear, like, the MP3s or something I had was, like, the the files were not, it was either listed to your, like, government name. Mm-hmm. Like, for some reason, when Busta sent me the Stove God Cooks album. Yeah. And I downloaded it. I was like, yo, these are the same joints I already have by over here. <laughs> right, right, I didn't right. put it. I, I, right, I, I right, guess right. I'd gotten it from maybe Top Shelf Premium sent it to me. Mm-hmm. Whoever it was. Someone else yeah. had already put it in my inbox and I just hadn't put it all together. And I was like, oh, shit. I didn't realize this is who Busta was sending me. Right, 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 right. Um, You were sleeping on me. I was sleeping. Come on. But I, but I wasn't sleeping on you because I liked the version of you I didn't know was you. Right. Okay. <laughs> I already liked the music. <laughs> right, right, right. So um, what what is the relationship? Are you and Busta um, in business or are y'all just homies and he's a mentor, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah, I feel like we always in business. You know, us always in business. Busta's the big homie. You know, he ushered this shit in. I talked to him last night. He couldn't make it to the show, but I talked to him last night. You know, the homie's just super proud and... If I can get money with anybody that had a part in, you know, me getting a step further, like, I'm with it. That's just it. Me and Marcy got partnership and shit. Like, I want everybody to eat. Anybody that, you know what I'm saying, showed me love, like, I want everybody to eat. Um, what's the, is there a plan you could tell people about right now, musically, do we know when a, a, a full length, a new full length project is coming? Yeah, in the next two months. The next two months, we're getting hit. We're getting hit with something—a full-length project. Can you give us information on said project at all? It's crazy. A, a variety of producers. This is not going to be an exclusive one producer project like last time. It, it might be. Might be. It might be one producer. I got a. I got a few albums done. Hmm. Um. So. It so we're could- just gonna fuck up the whole rest of the year. Okay, so you're just going to be coming. You have multiple, so you're telling me you have multiple projects done with multiple producers. Mm -hmm. Now, is that something you really like to do, is for a project tap in with one person? Like, is that does that work to the way you do it? that's just something that I got a joint, a whole joint done with Marcy. Me and Marcy got a whole nother joint done. That's that's a wrap. Yeah, that one is done. The other album is a bunch of various producers. So I don't like to do that with everybody. I'm saying if it worked, I'm with it. Like, I was talking to Static. He he reached out. He was talking about doing something. You know, if it work, it work. But I know me and Marcy shit work. You know yeah, that, and that's, a, that's an energy and camaraderie that once you get that's it. That's what I'm saying. And I couldn't, we couldn't do reasonable drought and not follow that up. So we had to do that. But I'm not saying that every producer I meet, I would do a whole project with. It's not like that. So I got to ask the question then, though. Yeah. You, you did say that your origins, you know, there was a level. You like making street shit. And, oh. and and you also like, you also think about hits. You think about choruses. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, but right now, the space that you're in is, is one of the underground gods right now who's doing it. Do you have aspirations of also doing more commercial stuff? Or are you, yeah, do you, that's what, the goal. But the goal is to... You know, stay true to this shit while we doing that. I want to balance both worlds because this shit is just rock. Marcy took it here. You know, he passed it to Griselda. They took it there. You know what I'm saying? He came back and passed it to me again. We still running with it. But I want to take it over there. Like, I want right Rihanna shit. Drake's like shit like that. Would you also want to write for people like that? Yeah, that's what I mean. So hold on. Perfect scenario for you mm-hmm. is your Stove God Cooks moving around the underground, making classic underground right. projects while also writing. Come on, for the mainstream artists. But do you yourself, would you yourself want to have the mainstream hit too? Or would you rather make the music the way it is and make the mainstream hit? If I can make this, if I can make this kind of music mainstream, absolutely. But you're not, you're not coming out. We're not gonna get the the no shirt. No, nah, we're not doing You that. know, 98 <laughs> jiggy version of Stove God Cook. No, nah, we ain't going to do that. <laughs> Isn't it But crazy? I'm not opposed to, you know, having a one of these records be a huge record. 
Yeah, listen, Conway had a little joint reason. Conway was featured on a um Conway had an R and B feature recently where he mm, see, I'm cool with that. Lost art, by the way. Yeah. The the, the rapper so jumping art. on the R and B joint at the <laughs> beginning. That was that was such a thing. Like you were the the Diddy had that thing going. I was about to say like, that was a bad boy thing. Yeah. They, he had that moment where it's like all if you were a new dope rapper, uh huh. If you were really popping, Mary was putting you on a remix. Right. And you lit. Craig Mack, you know, Pooba, Biggie, mm -hmm. Smith and Wesson, the list goes on and on. Yeah, like, yeah. And that was, but these days, I would say like this underground that we're seeing right now is one of the best moments for, for the kind of music I love that I think there's ever been. But there are other ways in which it can still grow. And that's a way yeah, I could see nah, it growing. Absolutely. It's the, it's the renaissance, man. Fuck that. We ain't even underground, like... Yeah, what is the what connoisseur rap? However you want. What, is there a word? What do you say when people say, like, let's say you're on an airplane. You're sitting yeah. in first class and you end up talking to some random person who's mm -hmm. also in first class who has no idea what the fuck right. a West Side Gun is. Right, right, and right. And they say, what do you do, young man? You're sitting up here with me. Well, what is it you do for a living? How do you, would you describe the kind of music that you make to someone who doesn't know it? We make classic Hip hop music. That's what we do. We make classic music. But that's what I do. That's what I tell them. I make classic music. Yeah, I get frustrated when people. Th th here's what I don't like about the word classic. Okay, mm -hmm. I like. The, I, I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. My concern with the word classic is, is I admit I was a little sensitive about my album when people would tell me like, "Yo, man, this is like a throwback. This is." Mm -hmm. they, they, I don't. Because it's not like yeah. if you really are knowledgeable musically, you would know if you listen to reasonable drought. Right. It may give you feelings that things from the old days made you feel. Right, right, right. But it's sonically not the same as no, that. Not at all. You know what I'm saying? That's why I kind of like connoisseur rap, like trying to figure out what that terminology is, because the word explain classic, that, though. I know. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it's music for people who really like good music. Okay, yeah. No, that's perfect then. You know what I'm saying? For real. It's not people who are halfway in, halfway out mm -hmm. to rap. It's people who want to hear really quality hip-hop music. That's it. Because I really felt like, you know, um, even the record you were on, Marcus Smart, that record wasn't like a, a traditional 90s no, no, no. boom bap sound. Mm -hmm. um, certainly... You know, like you take a song like Hallways, the the Flea Lord Marcy song. Yeah, 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 crazy. That doesn't sound like anything yeah, from no, back in the that day. That was crazy. It's just that the the feeling of and it. I, I don't even mean to interrupt you, but I felt crazy hmm. because when you asked me to do Marcus Smart, you said, "Yo, you think you could get Mars?" Mm -hmm. And then I look at the playlist. I'm like, "Oh yeah, that was crazy." Yeah, and it got into right, right, right. Maybe so I was crazy. So, so listen, I'm a curtain lifter. I tell I tell the whole story of everything. Yeah, the way it was was. You know, Marcy and I hadn't been in any sort of regular contact. Uh -huh. I hadn't interviewed him in several years, always with mutual respect, but we uh -huh. didn't know each other. Yeah. So I'm like, I need to get Marcy on this project or to me, it's not official. So I was talking to both you and Flea Lord okay. about like, I need to get Marcy on a joint. Right, right, right. And then I think, I think also there was a little bit of confusion too about, I may have mistaked even what I sent to who at the beginning of the first couple. Yeah. That, that was, that's the first shit I got done. Second song I got done. So I was still learning as well. What, the Marcy one? no. Yours, oh, okay. Yours was the the second, yeah. Second generation woo. Second generation woo was the first song I got done, and your song was the second yeah. song I got done, and then basically Flea hits me on some, yo yo King, I can make this happen <laughs> for you. Say less, it's nothing. Right, I, right, I right. I got you. I'm a, I'm with the God right now. Yeah. And so we ended up. He, he ended up hearing the hallways beat, which was just a perfect mm -hmm. thing for Marcy. Um, it turns out that Disco Vietnam, who produced that record. I didn't know this. Yeah. When he made it, he was thinking about Rock Marcy. See what I'm saying? So the universe, you know. That's it. It aligned everything but perfectly. You, but you really came through and blessed this record, man. Like, the first, that song, and we'll play it in a minute. When you hit Marcus Smart, there was a, oh, there was that street-level mix I show told him vibe. They, my man asked me, like, yo, what made you do that Marcus Smart line? I'm like, son, that's what <laughs> Rosenberg told me to do. <laughs> It's like, I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Rosenberg said he want to call it Marcus Smart. Yo, I'm it's like, so funny, too. All right. Yo, it's so funny, too. My idea, 
from the like the when I heard the beat and I was like, Marcus Smart. Right. To when the song got made. There was almost no relationship between how I envisioned Marcus Smart being yeah. incorporated and what eventually happened. But it worked out. Crazy. It just like it still sounded fantastic. Came together crazy. It was dope. Shouts to Marcus Smart. You know, yeah. a lot of people ask me why you name a song after Marcus Smart is because I'm a Celtics fan. Yeah. And Marcus Smart is the dude I'm proudest of rooting for. Like, he works harder than anybody. I know people who play against him hate that he drives opposing right, right, right. fans go crazy because yeah. he's taking every charge. Mm -hmm. He's diving on every loose no, ball. That's a fact. He's just, that's, the, that's that dude. And, and that's how you explained it to me. And that's, by the way, that's sort of how you and, and Flea yeah. live your lives and your careers. Like, we're going for this I shit. I got to. So it ended up working out beautifully. Yo, listen, man. Um, his name is Stove God Cooks. Big Stove. Big Stove, aka aka Big Stove. Come on, you can um you you have any other nicknames I don't know about by the way? Because um, I want to get er the I wrist get god. Sorry, the wrist god. The wrist wrist. The wrist. Yeah. The wrist god. Okay. The wrist god. But that's that's also cooking. Stovito. <laughs> wait wait. All right, Stovito. <laughs> we can go on for days. You know? All right, wrist god. Stovito. <laughs> I'm just trying. No, I'm just trying to get. I want to get those names. Yeah, yeah over, just okay. you know, just write them down. And last thing before I let you go. So obviously reasonable drought is a play on reasonable doubt. Mm -hmm. But um, is there, besides it being a cute play and reasonable doubt being a classic, was there any other thought process to why that was reasonable drought? I feel like when we, when we got like 80% through the album, just listening to it is like, it felt like how I used to listen to Reasonable Drought. Like every time you listen to Reasonable Doubt, even to right now, if I get in the car and turn on Reasonable Doubt, it's like I'm going to hear something that's just like, damn. Like that shit kind of saved, saved lives, if you understand. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If you understand what Hov was doing with that album and where he was, in it, like that's what it was for me making that album. Mm. Yeah, so I'm like, why not? They told me not to. Oh, really? They, they, yeah, they, they told uh, me not to. You know, I, I guarantee I know why. Was it because they thought it would feel like biting in some yeah, way? Yeah. Yo, in hip hop, sometimes it, I forget like how much the biting is a thing, and and yeah. and I think I have the perspective probably that you did, right? Of homage. So my album cover is we went with the this green. You can hold that. See how it's green. Mm -hmm. We. We ended up going with green. I wanted it to be purple, right? And of course, and it looks fire in purple. And and <laughs> you I was did it like, in purple. I I didn't do one. No, I'm saying you tried it. In oh purple. yeah, I'll yeah. show it to you. It it, it looked it looked yeah, amazing. Yeah. But of course, everyone's like, nah, purple tape. You can't do that. Right. And I'm like, well, of course the purple tape. Well, <laughs> right. Man, right. What do you mean? That's what I'm saying. He knows why I did he it. Knows, right. like, this is what I'm, I'm sorry. Excuse me. By the way, this is hip hop. Our entire thing Come on, is based off of sampling shit. other music. Right. That's what the whole shit is. Come on. You but with it, it. And hip hop's been around long enough now, guys. You're allowed to reach back and even sample That's from hip hop. It. Now, what you do is after this. You do the purple vinyl release. Yeah, like a special release. Come on. And by the way, these vinyl heads, they run out and get another one. Then you get then you give half to um the chef. Boom. <laughs> or we get a bonus. I mean half. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, For chef real. Can, listen, Chef get whatever he needs from me. That man has always come through. He's a legend. Bruh. The, yeah, the, he's the, the a rain legend. ghost coming through. That he's was the like he wrote meth last night. Mm -hmm. Telling me that he was a fan. That shit was like. Yo, meth is a meth is if you're a hip-hop head yeah meth is like a superstar yeah and when you was that your of first course, time meeting him yeah it was crazy you and were I, like yo that's and i'm talking to a homie next to him because he had his mask on mm -hmm. and he pulled the shit down. i'm like come on god you can't play like that in here he like yo like the and right now shit off west new album he like i love that record it's just like come wow, on. wow he specifically had a reference yeah, for yeah, it yeah yeah so it's dope moments like that that I say like mean something. All this other industry shit don't mean nothing. Yeah, when you get those moments though, For real. that's it. It's just moments like that and feeding my babies. I don't give a fuck about nothing else. How many kids you got? Two. How old? Uh, how old are they? Two old. 
too old. <laughs> so, in other words, using the word baby, super loose. Right, 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 right. Super. <laughs> yeah, they older. <laughs> Yo, his name is Stove God Cooks, bro. Excited to see what you drop next. Uh -huh. uh, make sure you give me the exclusive shit of early. Of course, of course. And uh, we'll be here for you uh, whenever you feel like coming back, man. Definitely, man. I appreciate you. Syracuse, one time. Thank you, man. You know.